So guys, there is nothing obviously as devastating as a farmer having seen his animals the previous day and they were in good health, in good condition, only to find them dead the following day. Unfortunately, there's certain diseases that can cause sudden death. And today I will be focusing on one of those diseases. I will be specifically talking about black quarter, aka black leg, aka C Ritwana. If you are Twana speaking, you understand what I mean. So please guys tell me down on the comments comment section what black leg slash black quarter is in your home language My YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, I am Dr. Nobs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, please kindly subscribe. Okay, and click the notification bell so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. It's absolutely free, guys, to subscribe. It just really helps my channel to grow so that I can keep coming back and making more videos. So if you like this type of content, please subscribe. All right. Thank you. Okay, so, so where should we start? Let's start with a couple of facts about black quarter. What is black quarter? Black quarter is an infectious disease that is caused by a bacteria called Clostridium shoviae. Okay, it's a disease that affects ruminants. Sheep, goats, and cattle can be affected, but it mostly affects cattle. Okay, it usually affects those animals that are in good health, in good condition. Those are the ones that you would usually find dead the following day. All right. And then another thing about it, you will see it mostly during this time of the year, during the summer months, after good rains, it's when you would see this disease. The bacteria can, can survive for a very long period of time in the soil. Okay. It is not destroyed easily by things like disinfectants, for example. Uh, how, how do animals get infected or how is the disease transmitted? You may be wondering. All right. So what happens is, like I said, the disease can live long in the soil. So what happens usually is that animals get affected or infected when they ingest contaminated, or should I just say eat, when they eat contaminated feed as well as contaminated water, for example. So the animals, what they do is obviously they'll be doing, going about their normal lives, grazing and drinking and then that way, the bacteria finds entry into the animal. And from that, the bacteria will be transported from the intestines into the bloodstream. And then from the bloodstream, that bacteria will go and be deposited in the muscles, right? And then there in the muscles, it usually just lies there and sleep until God knows what. <laughs> so it usually just lies there and sleep until something favorable happens. Something like, um, we're not sure what exactly leads to the activation or to the bacteria waking up. But usually what happens is that, the, that something will happen and eventually the bacteria will wake up. And when it wakes up, it gets activated in those muscles and then it starts multiplying. And then eventually it will release a poison and that poison will get into the bloodstream. And then from there, the animal will die. Or that's usually how the animal will die because the toxin or the poison that this bacteria produces, it kills. It is that poisonous, all right? What clinical signs can you look out for if um, you are worried about this disease? Like I said, it's one of those diseases that doesn't give a farmer a chance or an option. It's usually just, yeah, you just wake up tomorrow and you find, you find your good animals, your fast growing animals dead. All right. It usually affects cattle between the ages of six months and two years of age. Also, older cows and younger cows can also be affected. Right. And then with goats and um, sheep, for example, with goats and sheep, for example, it's always almost secondary to a wound in the skin. That's how the bacteria will usually be introduced into the animal. All right. So in terms of clinical signs, it's always very difficult for a farmer to actually notice that there may be something happening. But if, if 
if it does happen that you do um, get the chance or the option to see that something is happening and you call in a professional, these are the things that you can look out for. Um, fever in your animals. The animals may be swollen in their muscles. And when you touch those muscles, they may feel spongy and soft. And sometimes you would feel this gassy movement because of all that gas that the bacteria is producing in that muscle. You can sometimes feel that spongy slash gassy feeling when you press on the muscles. All right. And then your animals may be lame they may not want to eat they may look depressed and eventually they may die within 12 to 24 hours all right so those are some of the things that you can look out for they may not be so helpful um but the most important thing to remember and to always consider is that if your animals die and there was no warning sign obviously there's other things to consider but this is also one of them all right, and let's talk about diagnosis. How is the disease diagnosed? The disease will be diagnosed based on clinical signs as well as post-mortem findings if some of the animals are dead. I have said this before that I do not advise for farmers to do their own post-mortems. Always call a professional to come and help you. And um, during the post-mortems, there are certain things that we look out for. For example, if you make a cut through the muscle, you can usually see uh, the dark red and the smell and the gas bubbles in that muscle that would usually lead us to a diagnosis. We can also take samples to go and look at. Um, and then in terms of treatment, what can be done? If we do get the opportunity to, get, to, to catch the disease earlier on, um, an antibiotic, mostly penicillin in high doses, is something that us as veterinarians are able to do or can do for you, um, as well as some sort of anti-inflammatory and pain management as well, and as well as some sort of gut support, something like Rumix, is something that I would give to these animals as well. All right. And um, obviously now in terms of if we are suspecting that you are having an outbreak at your farm, we would advise the following preventative measures for the rest of your animals. And that's usually a vaccination. You will see guys on my channel, I talk a lot about vaccination. That's because vaccinating your animals is very, 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 very important. Prevention is really, really, really um, uh, cheaper and better than a cure. All right. So the most important thing that you need to be doing is make sure that um, Clostridial bacterial diseases are part of your vaccination program. All right. So as a prevention method, I do advise that you vaccinate your cows between the ages of six months um, to 12 months. They should be vaccinated for this um, disease. I do also advise that you please use a multi clostridial vaccine. All right. It is better than just going for black for blanthrax, for example, I'm not saying don't use it. It does work, but blanthrax only covers Clostridium shovii. It doesn't cover the rest of the Clostridial bacterial diseases that can also lead to a lot of problems in the farm. So do use a multi-Clostridial vaccination vaccine, something like Covaxin 10. I know it's a bit more expensive, but I would prefer something like that if you are in a situation where you are experiencing an outbreak at your farm. All right. So use that and always make sure you read the package insert because it is adv advisable. Most of these vaccines, it is advisable that after you give the first shot, you should actually boost again between two to four weeks or four to six weeks. It just depends on which vaccine that you, you chose to use. And then after that, you can boost every single year. Okay, guys. another thing that I, I want us to say to talk about is that dead animals have been shown to be the most problematic in terms of contaminating the soil with this bacteria. So it's very important that when animals die, let's please make sure that we get rid of the dead bodies the right way. Bury those animals deep and also or burn them. Okay, don't just leave them lying around because then they also become a source of contamination to our pastures and our soils and our water. Okay, guys, I hope this um, video was helpful. I'm not feeling well today, but I managed to come on here and make the video. I hope it was helpful. You found it. If you found it helpful, please tell me on this uh, comment section below. And please remember um, to tell me what is black leg in your home language. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you next week. Subscribe, like, and comment.